All right, so let's talk about some tricks, some tips and tricks for um, using potentials to pass data into our different connections. So when we talk about a connection, a connection is what happens when you automatically um, get an auto-connecting line, when you place two symbols in line with each other that have an auto-connecting line. These things on top of them are called connection definition points. They are not the same thing, right? These, we use the connection definition points to pass properties into the actual connection. The only way you can actually see the properties of the connection is either on a report or from using the connection navigator. If I go into the connection navigator and I right click properties, you'll see I'm at the properties of a connection. If I double click on one of these guys on the graphic here, I'm at the properties of a connection definition point. So it's very important to know the distinction. Okay, we can display at the connection definition points not only its own native properties of the connection definition point, but also the properties of the actual connection. Why is this important? Because we can actually get these properties of color and size, etc., from the potential or the project settings. So in this example, none of these have actually had their color and size defined. If you go into uh, the properties of one of those definition points, you'll see that the color and cross section is empty. The reason for that is under display, I'm displaying the actual properties of the connection. If you look here under block property 51, okay, that's what's displaying there. How do I actually see the formatting? This is going to be in the project properties. Block property 51, I'm gonna click the three dots. Here I have a separator as the, uh, the pound sign there, the cross section. And I, I told it I want to hide if this is empty and also hide the preceding separator for if some reason the cross section was completely empty. I don't want to just see a pound sign. Then we have a, just a space. And then I have the connection color number. So I basically just concatenated those two properties into one line. Okay, so for that, we're looking at the properties of the actual connection and not the definition point. And I'll show an example. Let me turn off my invisible elements there. I'm going to highlight all three of these potentials, potential definition points, potential connection points, rather. And I'm going to go into the color. I'll change that to black. I'll change the cross section to 14. I'll change the graphic of the connection to black. I should have hit OK, not cancel, black. Change that and then hit connections update. And now you'll see I've instantaneously updated all, can, all the connections on those different potentials. You can track your potentials by using the potential tracking. Okay. And the question is how do we know that how do we set up this potential transfer? So it's very simple for um, basic symbols like this motor overload or this breaker, however you want to think about it. If we go to symbol function data and go to the connection logic, we have a line here for transferring the potential to. So I'm telling connection point one to transfer to two here. But what about more complex devices uh, like this? So we have here three symbols that form this one device. We have the black box and the two device connection points. If you turn on the invisible elements, you'll see that this is connection point one, this is connection point two. So I'm gonna go into the properties of connection point one and then go into the logic. And here you'll see when we, tra when we wanna transfer to a different symbol within the same device, we're gonna put it in this double quotes. Okay, and then I'm going to do my potential tracking just to verify that that works, and it does. Okay, so let's do some wire numbering. I'm going to place my definition points first, apply to the entire project, and then I'm going to enter the designation. And you'll see we get our special, uh, special wire numbering for these grounds, and we'll talk about why that is. Um, before I go into that, 
often a question comes up about this. Okay, that's great, but what if I want a different wire size for a particular uh, section, right? That's not a problem. We can go into the properties of these connection definition points. And then here we can define the cross section diameter as 12, for example, and then I'll update my connections. And now that will show. So our connection definition points definitely take the highest priority. All right, let's look at the wire numbering settings. If I go to enter designation, click on the three dots. Here in the designation tab, we have our different format groups. So let's look at the three pH and make a modification. This is for our three phase um, potentials. So this is um, the connection group, 3PH. That comes from the format property, which we can take another look at when we open up those uh, potential properties. So right now I have the extent set as signal state, meaning um, the wire number will change when the signal is broken. That comes from the signal isolation property at the, uh, the symbol. So you can see that I have the data of the potential, a separator, page, row, and a subcounter. I'm going to make this a little bit different, so I'm going to delete everything except the subcounter and the uh, the name of the potential. And I just want to look at the subcounter's properties, so I'm going to open it. And the range of the subcounter is signal state. That's fine. I'll leave that the way it is. And I'm going to save and hit OK, and then I'm going to renumber everything. Now you can see I'm following the scheme 1L1, 2L1, and so on and so forth. And now we're using also potentials to control our different wire numberings. So these, since they're in that special formatting group, they follow a different uh, wire numbering than, let's say, the grounds. And that, that grouping property is found in the potential definition properties grouping. Oops, let me move that. Grouping. All right, so those are just a few tricks about how you can efficiently apply uh, wire colors and sizes across your project uh, without having to define it at every single individual connection definition point. So I hope uh, you learned some uh, tips and tricks here.